Hi guys, today we're gonna start chapter six. Chapter six is all about roots and radical expressions. Let's start with a little vocabulary. Here is an example of a radical. Now, in your life, you've probably only ever been exposed to square roots, but there are other types of roots. If I wanna use a root that is not a square root, I need to put a number inside the little check marky part of the radical, and that'll indicate that it is not a square root, but in fact, a different type of root. This symbol, since we're not always doing square roots anymore, we're gonna call it the radical symbol. You can also shorten that to rad or just root. But again, it's not always a square root. This one I would call an nth root. Since this number right here, which is called our index, is the number n. Okay, so these are words that I'm going to be using often in class. I will um, often say rad or root, and I am going to use the word index a lot. So when I say the word index, I'm talking about the little number that tells us what type of radical this is. Now, the number inside the radical sign also has a special vocabulary word. It's called the radican. I'm going to be honest, I don't say that word very often, but it does exist. So you should know that it exists. And again, um, the most common type of radical is a square root. And so since we're, you know, kind of lazy and that one happens the most, um, we don't usually write the number two here as our index because that's the most commonly used one. Uh, but for this chapter, if it helps, you can put a little two if there's no other number here. If we want you to do something other than a square root, like a cube root or a fourth root or a fifth root, we will put a number for the index. In this video, we're going to focus on just number radicals. And in our second video for today, we will introduce what to do if there's variables underneath the radical sign. For our first example, we're taking the cube root of 8. Now, we learned how to simplify square roots in first semester. I told you to do a factor tree. And because it was a square root, we were looking for pairs, two of a kind, two of the same number. We circled our two numbers, one went out of the radical and the other one went poof, disappear. In this chapter, since we're doing something other than square roots, we need to look at our index to decide how many of a kind we need to find. In this problem, since it's a cube root, we need to find three of a kind to be able to simplify this radical. When I factor tree in eight, I get two times two times two. Very convenient, I have my three of a kind. When you find three of the same number, you're going to circle them. One of them will hop out of the radical sign, but everything else in the circle is gonna go poof and disappear, okay? So no matter how large your circle is, only one can ever get out of that circle and everything else in the circle needs to go away. If you have leftover numbers that didn't make it into a circle, those will stay inside of your radical. The cube root of 8 is 2. All right, let's try this one. Now, in our first semester with square roots, we learned that you cannot take the square root of a negative. Well, we can, but it was going to be an imaginary answer, which was fine. We learned about imaginary numbers. For a cube root, we actually can have a negative. And so in general, the rule is, if you have an odd index, a negative underneath the radical sign, it's okay. Um, and if you have an even index, a negative underneath the radical sign is gonna give you an imaginary answer, which is also okay. You just need to remember to put an I in your answer. Negative 27 is actually negative three times negative three times negative three again because two of the negative signs will cancel and the third one will make it a negative number. So again, it's okay to have a negative underneath an odd index. Here again, I'm doing a cube root, so I need three of a kind. One gets out, the other two are poof, gone. And so the cube root of negative 27 is actually negative three. Let's run through that one more time, okay? So any positive number underneath a radical, it's just going to give you a positive answer. And it doesn't matter what your index is, right? Positives always stay positives. Those are the best numbers, right? So we don't have any special rules about positives. 
what we really need to do is we need to pay attention to negatives underneath the radical. If you have a negative outside of the radical, it's just going to stay where it is. So we're really focusing on those ones underneath the radical. If you have an odd index, like a cube root or a fifth root or seventh root or a 15th root, um, and there's a negative underneath the radical, that just means that your answer will be negative. The negative can go outside of the radical and it's okay. If you have an even index and a negative underneath the radical, so we're talking square roots, fourth roots, sixth roots, then your answer will be imaginary and you need to include an I in your answer. The I needs to be in front of the radical sign. It should not be underneath it anymore. This is our general rules for positives and negatives. Why don't you try these four problems on your own? And I want you to really, really focus on should the answer be positive? Should it be negative? Should I have an I in my answer? So pause the video, try these four, and then we'll reconvene when you're ready. All right, let's check your answers. So on the first one, I have an odd index with a negative sign. I'm going to expect my answer to be negative. My answer is negative 5. 125 is 5 times 5 times 5. Okay, the next one over is a little bit tricky. So negative seven squared is actually positive 49. So this is actually taking the square root of positive 49, which means my answer is positive seven. So be careful with that. Moving down to my second row, I have an even index with a negative number underneath my radical sign. So I'm gonna expect to have an I in this answer. Even index and negative, is imaginary. Now, I hope you did a factor tree on 81, got it all the way down to its prime numbers. 81 is actually four number threes, so I get three i for my answer. Three for the fourth root of 81, and i for a negative under an even index. All right, and then on our last one, now this is a square root. It doesn't have an index, but there is an invisible index of two. You can even write it in there if you want to. So this is a square root of negative 49. Since my index is even and I have a negative underneath, this one will be imaginary. So seven I. This concludes our first video for today.